Hey guys, what is going on, Valk here? So, I, Karina's information just got previewed by Smilegate. Uh, so we got the video as well as a full showcase for what this hero does. Uh, and I just kind of wanted to make a real quick video and give you guys the quick and dirty on my thoughts with her. And hopefully, you know, if there's something I missed and you guys have any thoughts about this hero that you think I'm, you know, um, that you think I might not have seen, yeah, feel free to share that. But without further ado, uh, let's just jump right into her kit. So as far as base stats go, uh, she's looking like she's about to be really, really tanky. Uh, team imprint, HP, as well as uh, self defense. Uh, and she is going to be a ice element knight, which is kind of uncommon. And I'm not sure what to think of it just like off rip. Going into her S3, it's essentially um, a defense. It's an attack into a defense break, then giving herself speed up. And if the attack doesn't miss, it's going to drop extra damage to all enemies based on her defense. So in this exact scene in their showcase, um, it shows that she basically slams a shoe for what seems to be only about a, few, a couple thousand damage. And after that, it ticks the full enemy team for about uh, 36k. So it, it's a pretty significant sum. Uh, but one thing to keep in mind is that uh, in this showcase, the Karina does have a Vigor buff as well as a defense buff prior to her pressing that S3. So it, it does look like to be quite a bit of damage, so I, I'm relatively surprised. I, I think she's this is a quite a powerful skill, especially if you consider the fact that it inherently defense breaks, so landing on the shoe it defense breaks the shoe and then inflicts a lot of extra damage. Uh, now you see a lot more damage on the air wall because um, she's having escort, which kind of absorbs a lot of damage for her team. So she's going to be taking more damage there. Uh, but the main highlight is that I'm noticing a couple thousand damage here, a couple thousand damage here. And then on these big thick bruisers, you're seeing, you know, figures uh, of over 10k. Well, I do think that's solid damage. I think in standard versus standard, right, uh, when you're playing, you know, bru a bruiser match versus a bruiser match, uh, this level of damage, while it is nice, it is definitely also recoverable. Um, so I'm not super huge on it, but I do think the utility is nice. I think in most of standard, it's going to be really difficult getting the defense buff, or the defense break, rather, to stick. So um, I guess we'll have to, you know, look at the rest of the kit. As far as her S2 passive goes, um, so this is when an ally gets attacked to 50% or less. It's going to increase her combat readiness by 30% and then activate this extra skill, which increases her defense. Uh, and on top of that, grants barrier to all, all allies for two turns, right? Barrier strength increased proportionate uh, to caster's defense. I, and I do believe this number with the uh, enhancements is going to be added to this total CR push which should land her somewhere about 50% CR push when all things said and done. So to me, this is a standard slash tank down, tank down styled bruiser uh, that is meant to play not as the main mitigator, but alongside a mitigator. And you're meant to play her anti-aggression. So either anti-aggro or even to some degrees anti-cleave. So I do think the strength, uh, this, so I do think the skill is decently strong. Um, looking at the numbers uh, in their showcase, this was about 15% HP on a 25k A Ravi, um, meaning assuming that she's on a standard build of about you know 2,000 defense or something like that, it, this is about a shield of 3,750. Um, so if you assume a normal build, the scaling for defense for her should be approximately somewhere around um, you know 1.5 to 1.7. Uh, and if this is on a really high defense build, then this might just be something like a 1.2 to 1.3, uh, which to me is kind of okay. It's not great. It's not bad. Uh, and I do think the fact that it's on a three-turn cooldown might hurt how viable it is. As far as her S1 goes, I don't think this is anything special. This is basically an Alencia S1, including the Soul Burn, just without the extra attack. Um, Overall, I do think this gives her like a pretty cohesive kit. Uh, now, as far as her artifact goes, I think this one is not too useful. I think if you were to play this character, um, you can definitely take that. But uh, at some point, you know, you wonder to yourself, okay, if she's there just to stack the extra, the extra stacks, right? The extra damage. 
Um, it's definitely playable, uh, but I imagine she's also playable on other artifacts that might help your team survive. For example, like I can see her running uh, a an Adamant Shield right next to a Aureus Knight, right? That way your team just can just become essentially ridiculously tanky. In standard versus standard, I don't even think a lot of times a lot of standard units, right? Even high tempo standard units like like, like Landy, for example, uh, th those units will have a very hard time punching through both Aureus and uh, an Adam and Shield. So uh, I, I think she's actually pretty okay in that sense. But overall, I think she's usable on any artifact, but we'll definitely have to see since she is a what I would consider a bruiser, even though you're not really supposed to build her crit. I imagine some people still will build her with crit chance and crit damage, um, but I imagine the most popular build would just be really fast on a lot of defense and maybe splashed in with a good amount of HP and effectiveness. And that's really just the breakdown of her kit. Um, in terms of usage, I think she'll be, as I said previously, right? I think she'll be really solid um, in anti-aggressive teams um, due to the fact that I think she's pretty tanky. So she'll be one really hard to kill. She can carry a defensive artifact. Uh, and on top of that, right, she can, if her ally drops low enough HP, boom, CR push herself, and then suddenly she'll just be able to punch and then splash a whole bunch of damage to the enemy team. In anti-aggro or anti-cleave, I think that's an irrecoverable amount of damage. Um, but in standard versus standard, I think a Destina or something would just be not easily, but very comfortably equalize the damage she can put down, right? Almost one for one. Thinking about her value in standard, I... I'm not quite sure I would take her over a unit like Shu, for example, with huge tempo swings, or something like uh, a stealth carry, for example, like Landy or Steny. I think those units still offer incredible combo potential and flexibility, as well as just unrivaled tempo, right? You can just like play faster and faster with those units. I think her passive is really useful for a bruiser to have, especially for a team, uh, right? Because that means she's not selfish, which means sometimes you can even draft her in a more aggressive team uh, as essentially a more defensive support. But what I'm not hot on is the fact that her passive can also trigger units like Politus and Winter. And as, as th I think especially versus aggro, um, that's just basically asking for it. So there is a little bit of a matchup conflict with her kit. And um, that's one of those things where I can't have an opinion on until I play th this unit a lot. Um, I think her S3 splash damage is nice, but it doesn't really, as I've said earlier, right? It doesn't impress me. I think standard units can recover from the damage. Um, and I don't think her defense break can stick very well because she doesn't innately strip. And I think cleanse is everywhere in the game right now. Now, the best thing and the most underrated aspect about her S3 I think is her incredibly short cooldown, which is three turns at max Mola and two of those turns having speed buff, which can help her cycle out. Uh, but overall, I think she's definitely a viable water bruiser to have for standard and tank down, uh, but definitely more anti-aggression. I'm not too hot on her since her activation condition is a little bit specific uh, and she's very, very, very vulnerable to crowd control. Uh, that being said, that is kind of just the hero showcase for I, Karina, um, very unique unit, definitely, uh, for a defense bruiser to not need, like, crit scalings, although I imagine she'll be very viable with set crit scalings. For now, though, that's the video from me. Um, I'm probably going to be playing the unit the moment she comes out today, so if you're interested in seeing that, she hasn't already come out yet, yeah, be sure to follow me on twitch.tv slash Valky, you can catch me there. Uh, playing RTA probably a couple of days a week, although next week I will be taking a week off. But for now though, that's it for me for this video, yeah. Um, if you guys have any thoughts or questions, feel free to, you know, just drop in the comments. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. I'll see you guys later. Stay safe out there. See ya, see ya.